Welcome to REST, which stands for Resiliency and Empowerment Seminar today. I'm your host, Susan Gans. I'm a business strategist and strategic advisor with Gans Strategic Solutions. REST stands for Resiliency and Empowerment Seminar today. And this is where I interview CEOs of small and mid-sized businesses, executives of nonprofits, and other community leaders to shine a light on their organizations and their missions, especially in today's challenging times. And today I'm delighted to be speaking with Karen Tannenbaum. And Karen is an attorney and has her LLM in taxation. And if that wasn't enough, she's also a CPA. She has her own firm called Tannenbaum Law and she brings with her numerous years of experience in helping individuals and businesses facing IRS and New York State tax problems. She and her team have successfully represented clients in matters including federal and state audits, IRS appeals and New York State conciliation conferences, federal and New York State collection issues, officers assessments, New York State residency audits, as well as New York state sales tax audits, and New York State voluntary disclosure. She frequently is sought after for speaking on IRS and New York State tax issues for a number of professional groups. She's been quoted in numerous articles in Bloomberg Business News, Money Magazine, Long Island Business News, The Daily News, and on uh, more topics of New York State residency and New York State tax collection issues. It's no surprise she's also recognized as a New York super lawyer and also one of Long Island's power women in business. She's been rated as a top law firm by Long Island Business News and rated a top woman-owned law firm in New York by the New York Law Journal. Karen received her LLM in taxation from New York School University School of Law and her JD from Brooklyn Law School, and she's admitted to the New York State Bar and to the U.S. Tax Court. And like I said, she's also a CPA, and she has some fun volunteer things that she does and things in her spare time, but we'll save that fun for the interview to reveal. So Karen, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for that amazing introduction. That's amazing. You're quite welcome. It's my pleasure. So let's let's start. Take us back to the early days of your career and, and tell us about your journey with um, the CPA world and also the law world. It's just amazing. You have accomplished so much. Thanks so much. So I'm Karen Tenenbaum of Tenenbaum Law. We handle IRS and New York State tax problems. I'm an attorney for 37 years, and I have my own firm. Next year, it'll be 25 years that we're doing this. We're located in Melville, and I always say we're here to help everybody. We're we're a resource for the community. We've been doing so many great webinars on the new tax law and all the tax relief programs that are out there. And now during this challenging time, the law changes every single day, and we always uh, offer our top 10 list. If anybody wants... Uh, the list of what they need to know. Uh, The IRS is providing some temporary tax relief. New York State is providing not as much guidance. But if you want to know what's going on, you could contact us. You could email me at taxhelpline. Taxhelpline at litaxattorney.com. Or you could write to me, K Tenenbaum, that's T-E-N-E-N-B-A-U-M, at litaxattorney.com. Or you could always call us, 631-465-5000, and we'll gladly share with you the top 10 list. But let's let's go back. Um, I'm lucky enough to have an amazing team, and we've been able to help so many people that have tax problems. Um, I'm honored to say we're one of the few women-owned tax law firms. We were named, uh, I think the New York Law Journal named us one of the largest women-owned law firms in in the state. I would say in the country, forget about just law firms, only about 7% of businesses earn revenues of a million or more. And of that, I think only 2% of women-owned businesses uh, earn those kind of revenues. And I have to say we're lucky enough to to have built up a practice to be in that seven-figure space. 
So that's, that's very exciting. But, Congratulations. Um, thank you. Thank you. So I'm a CPA and an attorney, but we do have a law firm. I have an LLM in tax, as you mentioned, from NYU. Um, and so I started in accounting. And uh, I remember I was in an accounting class in college, and my professor was also an attorney. And he said, why isn't everyone in this class also an attorney? So I said, okay, <laughs> I'll, I'll do that. And so off I went to law school. But then I went into, I wanted to get certified as a, a CPA. And in those days, you needed a certain amount of experience in public law uh, accounting firms. Uh, at that time, there were eight. So I got a job at Deloitte in the World Trade Center. I was on the 101st floor in the tax department. And I believe the direct, at North Tower, and I believe the direct hit was the 99th floor of the, of the North Tower. Deloitte had already moved out at the time of the bombing in 93, and I had already left because I didn't want to commute anymore. Um, but, but I started out in accounting firms. I then went to um, uh, Maine Herdman, which merged with Pete Marwick, which became KPMG. Um, and then after I got certified, I said, I don't want to commute anymore. I'd rather work on Long Island on the larger law firms here. And so I came to Long Island. I worked at Ruskin, Moscow, Evans, and Poltacek. And then I went to Farrell Fritz when I had my children and worked on a flexible schedule basis. And I was bringing in a lot of business at that time. I became known uh, for residency audits, New York State residency audits. We represent a lot of snowbirds, people who claim they live in Florida and New York says, no, you really live here. And so, um, you know, we represent them uh, in these crazy audits. There's, I think New York State does about 3,000 of those audits every year. They go after deep pockets. Uh, people who are executives in large companies or have s small closely held companies but have a house uh, maybe uh, on, in, the, in the city, an apartment in the city, a house on, in the Hamptons, a place in Florida, or they live in New Jersey and Connecticut, go to work in the city and also have an apartment there. And so we represent a lot of people uh, that have this residency issue because New York State will then tax them on all of their income no matter where it's earned. And these are deep pockets. So what we've seen is um, New York State is very aggressive, and in fact, even in this time of IRS giving some guidance and leeway, New York State is giving some tax relief in certain areas, but not necessarily clear guidance everywhere. Um, and so there's going to be a lot of residency issues that come up, like where are you sheltering in place? Uh, were you uh, in Florida from October till May and couldn't get back here? Um, or were you, were you here and can't get back there? Um, it also, sometimes it just comes down to a day count. Are they going to count these days against you? Are you here involuntarily? There's a lot of issues that come up. But anyway, going back, I became known uh, for this niche area of handling uh, residency audits. And I, when I started my own firm 25 years ago, uh, I said, you know what? I can't be all things to all people at all times. I was doing stock deals, real estate deals, all sorts of other great projects in the, in the tax world. And I decided to just focus on this one niche. So I became a boutique law firm doing only tax controversies. How's that for a mouthful? <laughs> yes, there's a, there's a lot there. I, um, I wanna go back and pick up on a point you mentioned earlier, which was that your professor had this profound effect on you. So, oh, well, if he can do that, I could do that. So I'm wondering if there are other mentors and let's say sponsors who you've had throughout your career and have those change and just tell, give us some insight to all the all the people you might have like worked with collaborated with been inspired by along the way so i was really lucky enough to grow up in a family that they had their own closely held business uh had great work ethics and uh, my mother and my father and my brothers always worked and uh, we would sit around the dinner table and talk about the problems that closely held businesses have. And I always knew whether I was going to be an accountant or an attorney that I would help closely held businesses and individuals. And I'm true to my word. I mean, that's one thing that still uh, excites me. I have a passion for that. Um, I've also been lucky enough to get some, um, I'll call it mentoring, but it's really, yes. it's really um, through programs. I've gone through the Goldman Sachs small, 10,000 small business program. And I got through a program called Make Mine a Million that was run by uh, Nell Merlino, who yes. started Take Your Daughter to Work Day. Yes. And she um, started a nonprofit organization called Count Me In for Women's Economic Independence. She partnered at the time with American Express. 
Yeah. And if you, if you won their contest, I was one of the top 10 pitch winners. You won a coach for 21 uh, sessions along with a whole bunch of other women on the phone all around the country before, you know, working remotely was the thing. And I even thought at the time, you know, these women are in different businesses. One uh, sold uh, wigs for women who had cancer and one did videography at weddings and uh, someone else did medical research and someone else sold um, bird seed. Uh, and I even thought, so how am I gonna learn from these women? But what you learn is that all businesses are similar. And so the first day, I, on the first call, I, I said, um, they asked uh, the woman who sells wigs, uh, what, what do you do? What do you sell? And, and, and how do you price that? And uh, she goes through her whole thing. I sell shampoos and I show wigs, sell wigs. And then they said, Karen, so what do you do? And I said, I sell legal services. Okay, well, what does that mean? Oh, well, I handle IRS and New York State, state tax problems. Okay, what does that mean? <laughs> the next thing I knew, they had me listing all the specific things I did. I handle installment agreements. I handle offers in compromise. I handle people who didn't file. I handle innocent spouse. I handle audits. I handle collections. If you have a lien, a look. Uh, a warrant, a levy, a wage garnishment, an income execution. And they said, well, how do you price that? And so we started going through these things and they said, well, does your website reflect that? And the next thing I did when I got off that call, the first day, first session, was say to the people who handle my website, could we list those exact things so that if someone types in, in a Google search, I have an IRS levy, it pops up with an explanation. It turns out I had a great article on New York State warrants that has gotten hits over the years, and I get calls from people saying, oh my God, I have a New York State tax warrant, now what do I do? And so day one, I learned so much. This was run by uh, a coaching group in Texas named People Biz, and they did a business accelerator program. And every night you had homework, or every week you had homework, yes. and it, was, it really enhanced my business. And one thing they focus is, focus, focused on is the, the marketing, the sales, the financial aspect, did you have a dashboard? Do you know your numbers? Um, so now, be between that group and the Goldman Sachs group, every single week, I have a financial analyst in the office who gives me the numbers. So we have targeted numbers. Uh, what are the goals for re revenues, for new calls, for consultations, for converting to clients? And how are we doing? It's almost like a GPS system. You know, are we on track? Do we have to make adjustments? You know right away when you're off track. So you have to have key performance indicators and then uh, follow along. So those were my two main uh, groups in learning about businesses. So I'm a CPA, I'm an attorney, but I never went for an MBA. And so this was like a miniature MBA really to take these two, these two classes. Of course, along the way, I have worked with so many great professionals. I have a tremendous referral support group. I belong to many, many different uh, organizations that meet on a regular basis. And over the years, each person has offered me different opportunities. So, you know, you meet somebody and, and next thing you know, you're being interviewed or you're having a, a, a speaking engagement or somebody once invited me to Albany to meet the, uh, the commissioner, the New York State Department of Taxation and Finance commissioner when I was very young. And we went back year after year. So for 30 years, we've had uh, meetings with all the major deputies and, uh, and rep New York State representatives, which is amazing. So when I, have a, a speaking engagement, I'll often invite somebody, perhaps somebody from uh, audit or collection to give the state's perspective and you end up with a great working relationship. So I've been lucky along the way to meet all these great professionals. So it sounds like you've found ways to really collaborate with um, the people that you've met along the way and also found opportunities to learn from others, even if they're not directly in, in your field, right? Like, like your, your folks in some of the other industries, wigs and, and, and so forth. So that's really um, quite inspiring. Well, what's great is because I'm also a CPA, I've been very active in the New York State Society of CPAs, uh, the Nassau chapter in the city, uh, NICPAP, the National Conference of CPA Practitioners. We do a lot of speaking for enrolled agents the Financial Planning Association of Long Island. So we've really engaged all the professionals on Long Island um, and, and we refer business back and forth on a regular basis. That's great. 
I want to hear also, because you're bringing out your, how you show up as a leader. So I just want to hear more about what are your core leadership values and how, how they show up in these other places, like besides your prof- your your day-to-day profession, it also seems in all these other groups and in your community. So, t- so tell us a little bit more about that. Well, sure. So I've always tried to take leadership roles. So I've been uh, head of the IRS Liaison Committee. I've been um, on the board of the New York State Society of CPAs. Uh, for the Nassau Bar Association, I ran their tax law committee for a number of years. Um, I'm always looking to get involved in things like that. And I've also started uh, groups. Yeah, later, we could talk about nonprofits, but I teach kids about money on the side. I started a nonprofit called Commerce Plaza probably 20, 25 years ago, uh, where we teach kids about money. It's a field trip that the fifth, they learn about uh, money and, and a, a number of related topics in school in a six week curriculum. And then they go on a field trip to uh, the location where they run one of a number of businesses for the day. Uh, Capital One supplies money uh, as a a support on a a regular basis. Ikea has been involved. McDonald's served the kids lunch and their family's lunch for 10 years in a row. Um, The kids operate uh, in a community. It's a hands-on experience. I'm not sure how they're doing it now in this with Zoom, but um, it's a trip that all the kids look forward to every year. Uh, you fill out a, a resume, a job application, and the teacher decides what you're going to be. And um, the kids, they're only, what, 11 years old, fifth graders, and they show up. So you're the bookkeeper, you're the banker, you're the real estate person, real estate agent. Someone is the, uh, the phone person. And so after the bookkeeper writes out a check for the rent, they come and they, the real estate person takes down the Velcro sign that says, you know, for rent. And when, after they write out the check for the telephone, the, uh, the phone person connects the receiver. And the next thing you know, you have 10 different businesses operating. All the kids, they even have a united way. All the kids are helping one another. You get uh, a check, paycheck, $4.50. You go over to your friend, the 11-year-old banker at Capital One. They deposit your check. Now you have a checkbook. You could go around and get all the promotional items. You want a water bottle, a pen, or whatever it is. Um, and it's really a great experience. All the kids interacting uh, with one another and learning about business. That's so exciting. And how did you decide to, to start this? What, what prompted you to do it? Okay, so I have two daughters, uh, 29 and 31. And when they were young, let's say first grade, uh, I went to one of the uh, curriculum committee uh, meetings. Was it a curriculum committee? Yeah, it was a curriculum committee meeting at uh, their school. I had, um, when my daughter was five years old, we went to the shoe store and uh, she wanted a, a quarter for the vending machine. You put in a real quarter in the vending machine, out comes a plastic egg, and what's in that plastic egg but a fake quarter. So she says to me, oh, I'm so excited. I said, wait a minute, you, you put in a real quarter, you, got a fake quarter. you think you got good value, something's wrong here, we gotta fix it. So I went to the, the school, I went to the curriculum committee meeting, and I told them about a program that was in Florida where they teach uh, uh, financial education from kindergarten through 12th grade, and I said, we wanna copy this program. They put me involved, they got me involved in a school consortium. It was nine different school districts and they were looking for grant money from the New York State uh, Department of Ed. And um, I think they ended up with like $1.5 million to split among all the school districts. They used one of, you know, the Commerce Plaza concept as one of the ideas. And the goal was to be separately incorporated after five years. So we became a 501c3, which we've now donated to Yes Community Counseling in Massapequa and in Levittown, and that's where the location is. So the kids actually go to a physical place in Levittown, and they have amazing teachers that run the program, and Jamie Bogenschutz is the executive director of YES Community Counseling Center, and uh, it's just a well-run program, and I'm very proud to have started it and to be part of it. I've also started a uh, a for-profit entity, because I said, you know, that's great that we're teaching 11-year-olds about money, but what are we doing for the little ones, right? the three to six, seven-year-olds. So we started a for-profit entity called Money Masters, and we have a char- uh, an animated character named Walter the Vault. And if you go to waltertheVault.com, you could see everything is free. You could color and play games, and there's books and charts, and uh, keep track of your allowance, keep track of your chores. Um, it's really a fun way for kids to learn, and we're in the process of creating a curriculum, and we have a number of books written fun poem books. And a few years ago, one of the larger toy companies hired us to write an activity book 
that they put in all their products, which is a plastic ATM machine, a coin saving jar, a, a, a cash register. And so our book is actually in their product and it's on the shelves. That's so fantastic that you're having this impact on people of all ages, starting from three years old and, and onward. It's, um, it's, it's so amazing. My goal would, so now, so one of my daughters had a baby and I have an eight month old grandson. Aww. And my, one of my goals would be to have something like a Barney TV show that he could learn and sing about money uh, while, while engaged. That's so cool. Stay tuned because I'm sure this will happen. <laughs> what happens? I'm a, I'm a big goal setter. And uh, so far I've been pretty good at achieving them. <laughs> yes. So I know you have some other projects in the works, right? About writing books. Do you want to tell us about that? Sure. So I actually have a few different passions. So one is teaching kids about money. One is entertaining. I love to entertain. And I'm actually in the process of working with um, an established author a cookbook author who wrote a book about the Hamptons and we're writing a cookbook. We uh, hired a chef and we hired um, a photographer and they took pictures of our food and uh, we put together what they call a lookbook and we're looking for someone to pick it up. So if you know of anybody, it's all about entertaining and entertaining in miniature shot glasses. They're called Varines. So in France, that's a big thing. You know, you, you serve everything in a little miniature shot glass. So uh, I have a tremendous collection of beautiful things to entertain with. And next time we're able to have parties again with uh, people, we're gonna, uh, you know, hopefully have a book that serves the, the public. So I also, um, you said, what are the projects am I involved yes. with? So I turned, uh, I shouldn't say my age, I turned a big number uh, last year. And uh, 10 years before that, when I turned another big number, um, my, my two daughters put together the most amazing gift. It was a scrapbook. Uh, of all my momisms, all the things that I always said, all the tapes that are playing in their head. And they put together the most amazing book that had photos and all my sayings. So 10 years later, I said, you know what? It's one thing to leave your kids money, but wouldn't a great legacy be my philosophy of life? And so I, I hired a ghostwriter who interviewed me for about an hour and a half every uh, other week for some period of time. And she put together the most amazing draft of a book and now it's really up to me to fine tune it. Um, I've actually asked my daughters to get involved because they do have the tapes playing in their head. They do know my philosophy, they lived with me. And now wouldn't it be great if I could solidify all the information, all the words of wisdom, and be able to pass it along to the next generation who have not lived with me, my grandchildren. Um, so we're working on that and it's, it, it was such a labor of love to, to go through this and actually have conference calls with my daughters and my husband on the calls with the ghostwriter, giving everybody's uh, philosophy and take on, on different things. So what I've learned is, yes, they know what I think is the, the proper way to live or the, the how, you know, what would uh, Jackie O say or what would Chanel say? Um, what would Karen say? But they don't have to live by it. They can make choices and adapt and adjust because now that they have spouses, they come with a different perspective. So it was fascinating. For, so for example, um, I always say I'm a tree rooted in the ground. I'm a woman of my word and I live with integrity. And you could always put my address in pen in a, in a phone book. I'm not moving, this is where I am, I'm a stable citizen. But, and that means that if you and I say we're gonna be somewhere at a certain time, you can count on me to be there. I may be a few minutes late, but I'm showing up no matter what. Could be snow, could be anything, I'm showing up. And what I've learned is from them that it might be okay to not be so strict with yourself. It might be okay to say, you know what? It's, it is snowing outside. Let me call and change the plans. And so their spouses have given them that flexibility that I, I don't give myself. So I found that fascinating. So, so mm -hmm. I'm learning That's as well. Right. So it's not just me putting my words of wisdom in a book. It's the, the, the collaboration of learning from them as well. Now that they're adults, they're amazing. I'm very impressed with my girls, very proud of my girls. And their spouses, they picked great mates and, uh, and hopefully living great lives. Well, they had a wonderful role model, and I just love that um, they're involved in your, your project and that you're learning from them now, as well as them learning from you. So thank you. What a, what a fun project. I want to talk about resiliency, especially during these challenging times. So, so tell me about 
you know, how you're being resilient now, how you might have been resilient in the past. I'll let you uh, take the, the question from here. So how timely, right? So um, I would say I'm working more now than I've ever worked in the last 35 plus years. Um, but I bounce back. And so, you know, if I ever have, I'll call it a meltdown, but I don't really have meltdowns. But if you ever, if I ever experience um, a moment where I say, oh my God, how am I going to handle this? You know what? I step back and I realize that, first of all, perspective and mindset is everything. Um, I'm a very positive person. I'm very optimistic. Uh, I'm very goal oriented and I can plan ahead for the future. So when I was just looking to say, okay, we're going to get through this in the next few weeks, that's one short term view. But now that I realize it's going to go on and on and on, I have to change my view. And so I have to go back to the reasonable work hours that I had before. So whereas right now, um, I'm, I'm doing a lot of webinars and a lot of meetings and a lot of figuring out what's working and what's not working in my office and how can I fix that? Yes, it required a lot of full focus time and attention and I'm giving it. But I also realize that I need my balance. I need time to uh, ride my bicycle, be out in the fresh air, uh, when the pool, when it's warm weather and the pool opens to swim my laps, uh, to have time for me to do the things that I enjoy, all the projects that we just mentioned. So it can't just be work, 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 work uh, all day long. So uh, what is resiliency to me? To, it's really um, having the right perspective um, and knowing that we're going we're gonna to get through this. Uh, life will be different, um, but, but remain positive. Think of all the good things in your life. Uh, I write in a journal on a daily basis since I'm, I, I've had every journal since I'm 18 years old. Wow. Um, and, and I write in it every morning. It's part of my routine. I have a routine every morning that I follow. And I make sure that I talk about what is going well in my life, what I'm happy about, what I'm, and, and what I'm planning for the future as well. And how lucky I am to have a great family and health and, and, and a great team at the office and just everything, everything, everything is positive. Thank God. I love that you have a daily routine. That's something I, I talk about a lot with people. Can you share a little bit more about that daily routine in addition to journaling what you do? Sure. So I, I also try, I try and eat healthy. I try and get in some exercise. You know, not, it's not always possible. Um, I also bifurcate my life. So I don't go, so again, before all of this, I don't go to the office every single day. I have a flexible schedule. And everyone knows what they can expect of me. As I said, I'm, I'm a woman of my word. I live with integrity. And so there are certain days and certain hours that I'm definitely in the office. And then there are other days that I'm out either networking or I always say I, I need a day, like I call it a pajama day. So now everyone's in their pajamas, but there was a time for the last however many years, 25 years, where I, thank God, had a day of just being me, whatever I want to do. If I don't want to wear makeup, if I don't want to get dressed, that's, that's for me. So I try and incorporate uh, all the things that I want in my life, in my life. I actually implement it. That's the goal. That's, that's my routine. And then I try and have time with my family, time with my husband, time with my kids, time with my parents. My parents are a very active uh, couple. Uh, awesome. I also go out dancing on a regular basis. They go out dancing on a regular basis. They do ballroom wow. dancing. And wow. so, so it's, it's, you know, it's, it's great. I didn't know that I had a, I had a, another colleague who's into dancing like me. <laughs> so I do freestyle. My parents do ballroom. Yes. And I have to say, they had a busier social life than I have. They go out <laughs> before this four nights a week. These are wow. people, the people in their mid-80s, and they're going out four nights a week. My mother goes to the gym four mornings a week. They take walks around the block. I mean, they're unbelievable. I'm God very blessed. blessed. Love I'm it. Very blessed. Love it. So... Tell me, what is a key word or phrase that you find inspiring that you'd like others to remember? So you mean like someone else's quote? Either, you know, somebody else's quote or, or your own or something that you, you find that, like, if you're in a place where you need something, like, what is, what is that phrase for you? That's a, that's a good question. So, you know, actually, I'm going to go, I, I, you know, because I make lists of everything. I'm a list maker. I'm going to go to my Evernote here, and I'm going to give you my quotes. Here, I, I have quotes. Let's see. Awesome. Let's see. Uh, I'm looking. Karen's quotes. There you go. Life is the accumulation of all our decisions and choices, experiences, and personality. Watch how you spend your time. Focus on what matters. 
Leave room in your day for serendipity. You know, don't overschedule. It's all about how you spend your time, money, energy, and other resources. I love this one. Start every day with a hug so you know your loves. Oh. Those are my quotes. But I also have quotes from others. You want me to give you some of those? Sure. Okay, let's see. Um, so Mario Cuomo uh, said, success is easy. Know what you want to do and do it. And I thought that was pretty funny. And Nell Merlino, who I mentioned earlier, who's yeah, going to take yeah. your daughter to work day, said, you can have it all. You just can't do it all yourself. You need a great team. And I have to say that that's, thank God, how I've built a great life at the office and at home. I've always um, surrounded myself with amazing people that, you know, take responsibility and, and do their job, have a good work ethic and get it done. Fantastic. It is all about that team and that support system for all aspects of our lives. So in closing, just a couple of more questions. What is one key takeaway or insight that you would like our audience to remember about this conversation today? Right. So really, that's it. Um, I'm a big delegator. And I have to say, you need a great team. So whether it's a great office manager, a great marketing team, a great financial team, great assistants at the office, great attorneys at the office, um, who help the, you know, the clients have an amazing, I keep saying amazing, a great work experience, a great journey through handling their tax problem. Uh, you need a great team. And in the house, you know, whether it's your spouse or relatives or friends, you need to surround yourself with, with people that are going to bring you up when you're down or just be there for you um, as you live your life that make it that make it worth living that make it so wonderful that make it fun well karen it's been an absolute pleasure to spend time with you today hearing about your background i want to make sure that people can find you so can you share with us, I know you did at the beginning of the show, but just to remind them of the places that they can find you. Sure. So it's Tenenbaum Law, T-E-N-E-N-B-A-U-M Law. We're in Melville. You can find us at litaxattorney.com or 631-465-5000. You could email us at taxhelpline at litaxattorney.com or you could email me at ktenenbaum at litaxattorney.com. We also have a free app, Tax Helpline. This is for the people who either want to do it themselves, everything is free, and we also give you valuable links to the IRS and New York State websites. So if you want to do your own, let's say, installment agreement and you meet the criteria, or New York State now allows you to do online and offering compromise, or if you're a non-filer and you need a voluntary disclosure, New York State has a uh, a website for that. So you might want to have um, one easy link to these places. And so you could download Tax Helpline and it's everything is free. We then give you a free 15 minute consultation. So while you're looking at things and you don't understand what you're looking at because it's quite complicated, you could call us anytime and we're there for you. Thank you so much, Karen. And uh, thank you to my audience for watching. And until the next time, the conversation continues. Thank you so much, Susan, for having me. This was really wonderful. You're quite welcome.